Here we are in the year 2020 and we still are dealing with the same thing in the video gaming industry and that is sequel after sequel after sequel after sequel and the occasional spin-off here and there. Keep in mind over the last five years or so we've had about almost five different Assassin's Creed titles from Syndicate to Valhalla. And you know what, almost every title, I'll be honest with you guys, I've played almost every title. Uh, you know, I played triple, triple A titles, okay? Let's be honest. And while we're on the sense of honesty, almost every game I played in 2020 is either a sequel or a spin-off or some major AAA title, which leads me to today's topic we're going to talk about. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is out on both the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5. Needless to say that when the game was announced way back, and I think it was like September or August, I was pretty damn excited, and then I was let down again when I heard it was pretty much... DLC, and then I was excited again because the developer of the game Insomniac said it was a standalone title. Then I was let down again when they said it would be shorter than the 2018 Spider Man game uh, that featured Peter Parker. But News said did not stop me from shelling out the 70 bucks for the ultimate launch edition of the PlayStation 5, which came with, believe it or not, an unneeded but pretty well received remastered edition of that 2018 title. So what we're going to do today is we're going to break down this game and we're going to give it the good old classic review here and see if Miles Morales is really worth spending the 50 plus bucks on about a 15-20 hour game. So from a story standpoint, the game is actually pretty solid. Uh, while it doesn't check all those boxes as opposed to the original title in the franchise, it still is a pretty damn worthy add-on. The story focuses on Miles really coming into his own as Spider-Man and, and dealing with the... I guess trying to combine his secret identity as Spider-Man and his life as Miles and trying to balance that that precarious, you know, perch here because it is not uh, the easiest thing to do as we learned, you know, from watching Peter do it in both cinematic universes as well as in the 2018 game. Uh, the, the game really does a good job with the contrasting of the two, but unlike the original, there's very little time where you're playing as Miles. Whereas in the original, we did have uh, whole missions where you're playing as Peter, or you're playing as Mary Jane, or you're playing as Miles himself, and you're, it's breaking up the time of Spider-Man. In this game, you're pretty much Spider-Man the entire time, and not that there's anything wrong with that. Remember, this is a shorter game with a different character. They're doing a different thing here. Now... This also works, plays, because the game takes place over a very short period of time. It's a very speedy, quick story if you're just playing the game story. Uh, keep in mind, the game takes place several days before Christmas. Miles' mother is running for city council. There is a new uh, domestic terrorist group called the Underground that attacks her rally because they are mad at the big, bad energy corporation known as Roxxon. And... Throughout this entire game, we have this conflict between Roxxon and the Underground, and then Spider-Man and the Underground, and then Spider-Man and Roxxon, and it's just this conflict between these things, but it really comes down to is the conflict, the personal conflict between Spider-Man and the Tinkerer, and it works because, once again, this game crafts really believable and relatable relationships, and that's what the big thing is that I loved about 2018 Spider-Man. That being said, much like the previous installment, the relationships do drive the story, more so than the actual content of the story itself. The story itself is not terrible as a whole as a traditional superhero action storyline, but when you get down to it, the relationships really help build the tale, make it feel more believable, make it feel more cinematic. The one thing that does hurt it though is that most of the people who are familiar with Miles only know him from the 2018 game or even into the Spider-Verse. A lot of people aren't going to read the comics and be as familiar with characters such as Genki or, you know, Finn or Danica or any of these other characters. Yes, we know his mother and his uncle uh, because of the fact that they were in the movie. Uh, the, the Spider-Verse movie, not the pre and his mom was in the previous game as well. But keep in mind that a lot of people aren't reading the comics. Yes, most of these characters do appear in some shape or form in the comics. And, you know, having read the comics and knowing the chemistry between these characters from the comics as well as, you know, the movie and the previous game, it all kind of really helps you as, you know, a fan of the, 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 the source material. That being said... 
what really helps drive these relationships is the dialogue. The dialogue in this game, I feel, really gives Miles his own personality, his own character. They really do a fantastic job fleshing out Miles as a character. And it's not just, he's not just, oh, he's Miles Morales' Spider-Man, but he is... Miles Morales and Spider-Man, they give him his own personality, his own little quirks, his own little, you know, hobbies, things he's passionate about, and it's seen throughout the game continuously, such as with the music, and we'll get more into that later. Now, it's very obvious that the developers of Insomniac, who make phenomenal games, historically speaking, really do care for that Spider-Man franchise. They want to grow and harvest it and exploit it at the same time. Right now, they could easily do a sequel to Miles. They could do a sequel to Peter. Hell, if they really want to, they could probably make a Black Cat standalone game. It'll probably do pretty well. I'm really hoping that they continue to create more and more uh, Spider-Man type characters if they do uh, Ghost Spider or Spider-Woman. I think that'd be a pretty sweet thing to do. And they could easily do a base Spider-Man game every three, four years, and then, you know, in between, do a standalone game or do a sequel to Miles every, you know, what to do, but they, they're passionate about it. That's what I'm trying to say. So, we did play this game on the PlayStation 5, so our footage is from the PS5 version, so some of the technical nitty-gritty might be slightly different. That being said, we're going to talk about the graphical leap from a PlayStation 4, mainly a PlayStation 4 Pro, to a PlayStation 5. It's not as noticeable at this, at this time, in my opinion, having just played games like Ghost of Tsushima on the PlayStation 4 Pro before jumping over to the remastered Spider-Man and Miles Morales on the PlayStation 5. There's not a major graphical difference. There's slight things such as the 60 frames per second, which I don't know if the PS4 Pro did that. I'm pretty sure it did, but I'm, don't quote me on that. Now, the one thing they did allow is this new technology called ray tracing, but Miles Morales didn't really have that as much until uh, an update literally the day before we recorded this, so part of the game does have that 60 frames per second ray tracing as opposed to 30 frames per second with the ray tracing, so there is a different upgrade. Uh, little things between rem the remaster and the original game is some textures are upgraded. Skin looks much more realistic, more believable. You can see blemishes. Uh, hair looks more realistic, which has always been a big thing in video games as opposed to doing cell shaded uh, anime-esque games. You know, those things look so much better. But the one thing that really blows my mind coming from a PS4 to a PS5 is the colors. They're more vibrant. They pop more. There's more neon lights in Miles Morales than there was in uh, the PS4 version of Spider-Man, but having played um, Spider-Man on both the PS4 and PS5, there's a big difference. The lighting is so much better. Uh, at nighttime, it, it got a little gritty and dark on the PlayStation 4 version, but on the PlayStation 5, it still it pops because all the other colors around it really are vibrant. It's rich. It's amazing, uh, but needless to say, that doesn't the graphics don't affect your enjoyment of the game. The fact that they look realistic and are impressive uh, really does help the game but it's not the entire thing uh, we're, the big thing about this is is like with the previous game is it does manage to maintain that theatrical cinematic presentation and it is in that visual uh, department you have those big action sequences like the bridge sequence which we saw in the original announced trailer the ending sequence uh, lots of these little pieces are very cinematic very action set piece uh, sort of like Uncharted did or the previous Spider-Man did. Now, the one thing, though, is the differences in this game is it's not as cinematic as the 2018 title. There's not as many big action moments. There are big action moments, but they're not as big. It'd be like um, 2018 was a big action, big budget Spider-Man movie, and this one was probably more like Black Widow, where it's a smaller budget. It's or Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's it's got its scenes, it's got its moments, but it has the heart. It has the heart of the big budget one but it's missing, you know, the money. And we also want to talk about presentation, we're going to talk about the music. Now, the one thing I noticed is uh, the game really doesn't have a big, big soundtrack, and that was a big thing for the 2018 version of the game as well. It does have, you know, you know your soundtrack, uh, your action, you know, sound, sounds and everything like that, but it, the thing is, it mixes in that hip-hop style of music that fits in with Miles' character. Uh, Miles likes making beats, uh, there's a... There's a collection of items that you can collect that pertain to this as well and it really fits in with the character and they do a good job mixing that in throughout the game it's not like it's forced 
Like, you know how a movie soundtrack has forced music in it. This is not forced in any way, shape, or form, and I think that really works out for um, this game as a whole. You know, the music, the visuals, the voice acting is tremendous. Uh, the fact that they have a 24-year-old playing a 17-year-old Miles Morales and he still sounds like he's going through puberty is fantastic. The emotions these characters display throughout the writing, uh, throughout the script of the game is also really well done. It really does feel like you're watching, uh, I, I would say, maybe a mini-series as opposed to a movie, which is the same thing with the previous Spider-Man game. So that's a big thing, and I really do love that about this game. Uh, Gameplay-wise, there's not a massive difference between 2018 Spider-Man and Miles Morales. Uh, there is, and that's a great thing, because the game still plays amazing. We're playing on a DualSense 5 DualSense controller with the haptic feedback, which at times does feel a little intense and a little strong at times, but it doesn't affect anything. The combat is still as smooth as ever before. You mix in your gadgets... Uh, as well as you know your web slinging your webs and your you know fisticuffs and your combos and you want to rack together as many combos as possible uh, you, you do have that miles but there's a big difference here is Peter is smaller and stronger and so he's gonna be a little bit slower but he hits harder it takes less hits for an enemy to be knocked out with miles I've noticed it takes a little bit more hits to knock out an enemy and that's probably because of the fact that miles is smaller He's not as strong, and he's inexperienced, so they actually do a really good job. A lot of the animation sequences of him throwing punches and kicks, it's a little sloppy, it's a little janky, and I like that. It's little details like that that really kind of blow, sends home the game, uh, the game's idea there. I, I think that's a little thing, maybe I'm just picking that out, I don't know, but you know, you also have to keep in mind, there are some interesting gadgets that Miles has that Peter doesn't, and I love mixing them in there, even though I, it doesn't seem like I do, uh, if you watch our Let's Play here, but, you know, mixing in items such as the gravity well, the remote binds, the hollow drones, these are just some of the few neat gadgets that you can mix in your fights, uh, as well as there's some newly added special abilities that Miles has, that if you watched in the Spider-Verse or read the comics, you are familiar with these such as camouflage and the venom attacks now camouflage you can actually you know camouflage yourself and enemies literally will not see you so it's great if you want to kind of go back into stealth if you mess up to go into camo or if you just want to kind of be a dick and just run around and just attack people you know when they can't see you. but keep in mind it has a timer on it and it doesn't last forever the venom attacks though are really sweet you have a venom punch you have a venom jump you have a venom dash you have a venom throw all of them are very effective and you do have a venom meter that builds up that you can use these attacks on. It does work a little differently than in the combo. You get to build up combos that works a little differently than in 2018 because you had the Venom and you still have the finisher moves, but it still works well in combat. It is such a thrill to get into. Uh, the game does follow that uh, basic structure of having missions and earning tokens to purchase new suits, upgrading your mods uh, and gear, but unlike the last time, we only have activity tokens and tech points. Last time, if you remember, we had backpack tokens, landmark tokens, crime tokens. We had all these different tokens, and the tokens would be only usable in certain things. This time, activity tokens are usable in everything. Tech points are usable on certain things that you can use mixed with activity tokens which is fantastic so there's no need for us to really focus on doing 5,000 crimes to get one crime token uh, every single time uh, it, it's great uh, you don't have to do every single crime in the game uh, to get that 100% completion percentage because you have to do I think there's seven different crimes and you have to literally do uh, them at least once and get all three of the possible tokens including the little side stuff to get that 100% completion and, and let's be honest here uh, this game is definitely on the shorter side we did point this out uh, earlier it does clock in between 10 and 20 hours based on how you play uh, if you are playing just story run we're talking about 5-10 hours if you're talking about trying to do everything in one run we're talking close to 20 hours uh, in, in two playthroughs in order to get the platinum trophy which you do have to do two playthroughs because there are four trophies that you can only get in New Game Plus, including completing the game in New Game Plus. It clocked about 30 hours, and which was about 20 hours for the first playthrough and about 10 hours for the second run. And it's still doing 100% in the second run, by the way. You're doing it faster, though. A cool new feature in the game is the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man app that Gangi develops in the story that houses mini, mini quests, like for quests from NPCs such as saving kids' toys from you know, bad guys and things like that. And it also does house occasional side quests. Uh, and it also keeps track of the crimes that you've gotten that 100% for. Uh, you can always go back and replay them as well. Uh, and since it's a smaller title, there is a lot less to do and a lot less to collect. By the way, there are underground caches, which are your tech 
uh, tokens and stuff like that. There's about 35 of them throughout the game. You also have about 16 time capsules, and those are easy to swing around the city and grab while. Uh, there is a thing called sound samples, which we were talking about earlier. Uh, they're a bit trickier, and you get them closer to the end of the game, and they do require uh, you to match a sound sample to what's, what it is. So, for example, you might hear the sound of a boat over in the, you know, in the river. You have to point, you have to hold down the left trigger button, get the boat, and then trigger the R3 button, and then you record that sound. So it's, it's not really hard, but it is a little bit trickier to match a sound sample. But there are also postcards that you can do at the end of the game, and that is a trophy-related thing. You do need to get them to get the 100% uh, in for trophies as well. There's also six enemy bases to clear, as opposed to, say, 500 different Fisk, Demon, and Sable hideouts in the original game. And the one thing that does make a return is the challenges that Pete has scattered, such as combat, traversal, and cell challenges. There are three of each uh, throughout the entire map, which is the same as the previous game, and they do range from easy to very frustrating. Now, this game, like I said, does use a dual sense haptic feedback on the controller, possibly too much at times, but it doesn't ruin the game any, in any way. Overall, Miles Morales is a very pleasant experience and a sight to behold. It doesn't really break new grounds in terms of making game, game making, but it does make for one of the best exclusive launch titles that I have seen for a console that I would play right away. And no offense to Deep in Souls, I'm not a Souls born person. That being said, like I said, the PlayStation 5 has had much better uh, launch titles than the PlayStation 4 did. I remember that. Still playing PlayStation 3 when the PS5 came, PS4 came out. Right now, I can play my games on the PS5, but like I said, there's still some PS4 titles that are coming out, such as Cyberpunk 2077, that you might have to play on the PS5 for now with the PS4 game. But that being said, 50 bucks, investing those $50 into a game that will only give you about 30 hours, even if you do two runs and get the Platinum Trophy, may seem like just a s bit of a stretch. I'm telling you guys, that's not the case. This game is so good, you'll find yourself probably playing it, finishing it in like three days, if you play it how I did, five, six, seven hours at a time. The game is fantastic. Uh, even if you do the two runs and get the Plat, it still feels worth it to me. It's a fantastic title. And even if you get the PlayStation 4 version, you'll get a free upgrade to the next generation version of the PlayStation 5. If you get the PS5, all you have to do is pop your PS4 disc into the PS5 console. You'll be able to get a digital copy of the PS5 version. And yes, your saves do carry over. I'm not sure about the trophies, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. You can experience the game again, and it's still going to be fantastic. And by the time you get a PS5, if you don't have one already, uh, it'll probably be you know a good time for you to get another free platinum trophy, essentially. So overall, I'm going to have to give my score for Miles Morales. I'm going to give it a nice, solid, impeccable 9 out of 10, because this game is great. It's fantastic. Yes, it's on the short side. Visually, it's breathtaking. It controls like a dream. Playing as Spider-Man feels amazing yet again. And you know what? I'm going to take away a point for it being short, but you know what? There might be DLC. Who knows? But definitely check out Miles Morales uh, if you have a chance, be it on the PS4 or the PS5. But don't miss out because this game really does kick. My name has been Angry Banjo, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.